welcome. Let's start off this morning our program with our devotion. And Sister Mabel Jones will lead us in our devotion. Thank you, Sister Plummer. Good morning. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Let us begin our devotion. At this time, I will call on our youth, our children to come with a song. Ray Temple, would you come at this time? We tried to use our children's as much as we possibly can. So this was one of our opportunities to use our young people's. Amen. There they are. Isn't they beautiful? On this early Saturday morning. Praise God. Let us hear from the children of Great Temple CME Church, the pastor, Reverend Edith Carter.
Amen, amen, amen. For he alone truly is worthy. Thank you, Bray Temple Youth uh, Choir. You did a fantastic job. God bless you and continue to do God's work. At this time, we will go into prayer. Please let us bow our heads and place ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you this afternoon, this morning, in humble prayer. We invite your presence into this program. Thank you for waking us up this morning, mm -hmm. allowing us to come together on this virtual Zoom uh, program. Before we start this program, the Mid-Michigan District Missionary Society annual Christmas luncheon, we just like to say thank you. We realize that without your blessings, we will not be able to succeed with the plans we had for this program. Thank you. Thank you for the committee that worked so faithfully. Continue to bestow your grace and divine wisdom to all of us present here on this virtual Zoom program. Continue to bind us so close together and love, for if one fall, we all fall. Teach us to love for the greater glory of your name. Bless the sick and the shut-in, those we have left behind in their homes that could, have, could not be with us today. Father, grant them peace and joy as they go throughout the, this day. We praise you. We magnify your holy name. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading will be coming from 1 Timothy, the 14th, 4th chapter and the 14th verse. Hear these words coming from the first Timothy. Neglecting not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by the prophecies, with the land on of hands of the presbytery. The word of God for the peoples of God. Thanks be to God. This concludes our morning devotion. Thank you for participating in our devotion. God bless you. And God bless you, First Lady Mabel Jones. Thank you for the wonderful devotion. As we move on with our program, presenting our protocol will be Sister Daryl Evans, and following Sister Daryl Evans will be our welcome given by First Lady Sister Charmaine Bell. Good morning. I am Daryl. I rise to establish protocol. Good morning, and to God be the glory for all the great things he has done. To Bishop Sylvester Williams Sr., the presiding prelate of the Third Episcopal District of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, and his spouse, Mrs. Carmen Williams, to the presiding elder of this great mid-Michigan district and the Detroit districts of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, Reverend Dr. Tawana Harris to the patron pastor of the Mid-Michigan District Missionary Society, my very own pastor, Reverend Llewellyn V. Jones and his lovely wife, Mrs. Mabel Jones, to the Michigan Indiana Region Missionary Society President, Dr. Linda Logan and her vice president, Mrs. Lynn Kelly, to the president of the Mid-Michigan District Missionary Society Evangelist, Carrie Gordon, to all the immediate past presidents and patron pastors of the Mid-Michigan District Missionary Society, to all my missionary sisters and, and brothers, clergy, laity, family, friends, and special guests. We honor and welcome you. May God bless you and keep you today and throughout this sacred season. At this time, I'd like to present to you the missionary president for the Mid-Michigan District. Evangelist Carrie Gordon is a member of Bray Temple CME Church in Pontiac, Michigan. She's active in her church. She's a choir member. She serves on the stewardess board. She's president of Bray Temple's Missionary Society and so much more. 
She's a speaker, a dynamic speaker, a very busy mother of teenage children and grandchildren. And she is president of Mi Michigan District, as I indicated. Sister Carrie is an awesome woman of God, a doer, a giver, a fierce soldier on the battlefield for the Lord. And she does it all with a smile on her face and without breaking a sweat. I introduce to some of you and present to others the dynamic president of the Mid-Michigan District Missionary Society, our very own evangelist, Carrie Gordon. Thank you. Good morning. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. It is with great honor to welcome you all to our annual Mid-Michigan District Missionary Society Christmas program as we share the gift. Sit back, relax, and find a comfortable spot as you witness a theatrical presentation of the deity through scripture, storytelling, and music. Again, I welcome you once, I welcome you twice. I welcome you three times in Jesus Christ, for he is the reason for the season. God bless you all. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. Next on our program will be a musical selection of Go Tell It on the Mountain. And this is going to be led by um, Dale Humphrey from the Bray Temple CME Church with the Mid-Michigan District Musical Chorus. Amen. Shepherds kept their watching over silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go. Jesus Christ was born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angels' chorus that held our Savior's Well, we're here to go tell it on the mountain today. Next on our presentation, and we definitely, uh, the program is shaping up so beautifully. We just wanna thank everyone thus far. Next on our program, as we prepare for the share the gift moment, a very special part of our program at the time where we give a gift. And um, today that, um, will be brought to us by Sister Daryl Evans, and she will be making the special presentation um, and also uh, introducing our special guest. Thank you, Sister Deborah. Sh Thank you, Sister Deborah. Share the gift moment. In the years prior to the world pandemic, COVID-19, individual missionaries filled tables full of gifts for selected charities. But uh, COVID-19 restricted our physical presence. And so rather than discontinue making any contributions to selected charities, we decided to um, give a small but love-filled donation from our sometimes meager budget. 
and at this time, uh, I'll share the gift uh, moment recipient for 2022 was nominated by St. Peter CME Church Women's Missionary Society and voted upon by the Mid Michigan District. Uh, in acceptance. They are located in Flint, Michigan and provide a wide range of services to broad populations in the Flint community. The Women's Missionary Council supports programs locally at the connection, supports programs at the local, connectional, and international levels. Um, we, present, we would like to present a small token of appreciation for valuable services that you provide in the upbuilding of our community. Ladies and gentlemen, our recipient for 2022 is the Center for Hope, which is a division of Catholic Charities. I present to you Mrs. Teresa Hurley, who is Director of Development for the Center for Hope, Catholic Charities, and she will share with you a little bit about the services that they provide and how we may be of service to them. Um, Director Hurley, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, first, for inviting me to be here, and secondly, um, for your heartfelt gift to us. I know you said small but full of love, and I'll, I will. I'm the first to tell you that every dollar does count, uh, regardless of the size. But I can certainly feel the love in here this morning. This is a beautiful program, and um, I'm just really glad to be here today. So, um, as you heard, Catholic Charities um, and the Center for Hope does offer a lot of services, and currently going on just in that particular building is our community closet, which is all clothes and shoes and hats and gloves um, that have been donated um, by, the, by the general public. We also have a personal needs room in there. So what that means is that um, our clients, our guests can come in and um, secure some personal hygiene items such as deodorant, toothpaste, shampoo, the things that we do take for granted, no doubt. And above that, we also have a work ready room. So that room is full of suits and professional wear. And that is for anybody who is out for a job interview. Uh, we have scrubs in there. So if you have people in our community that are in need of those items and just don't have the wherewithal to, to pay for them, please send them down to our work ready room as well. In, in that building, we also have showers, laundry facilities, and that's just on one level. Um, on our lower level is where we have our soup kitchen. So every day right now, um, as you can imagine, with the cost of inflation going up and the cost of everything, food and such, we're really seeing a, a big influx of people coming in there and families. And they're not coming every day, but they're coming enough to help offset their, their costs and their expenses. So on average right now, we're feeding 130 people lunch every day and that's where every day of the year we're open. And starting on December 1st, we opened our warming center, which is also located in that building. And we're housing anybody who is just looking to get out of the cold temporarily, or even a place to stay for 24 hours um, every day of the week. And that is open until the end of March. So your gift will certainly help us be able to continue those programs and services. Above that, if you're ever in the area, I would love to give you a tour. And, and beyond that, we are always looking for volunteers. So there is the soup kitchen, as I mentioned. So we need assistance with helping prepare the meals and also serve them. We also have the community closet, as I mentioned. Those clothes don't make it to racks by themselves. So we're always looking for people who are willing to give an hour or two and come in and hang up some clothes and make sure that that um, stock is always available for our guests. And also in the personal needs rooms, um, we're always looking for people to help us there, sort through items and get our shelves stocked. And that's just at the community closet. So we do have more programs, um, or I'm sorry, that's just at the Center for Hope. We do have more programs, but this is certainly a worthy um, building and service. And that's where most of our people under um, underserved people in our community come to. Um, it's not uncommon to have people walk in the door and just say, I'm cold, can I have a pair of gloves? So we actually have 
a box, a bin of gloves and hats and scarves available for anybody who needs them. And your love and your compassion and your um, donation and support um, is what makes that happen. So on behalf of Catholic Charities and all of the people that we serve, I just want to say a very heartfelt thank you and also a very blessed and happy Merry Christmas. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for that special presentation. And um, it's just a blessing to be able to give. Um, so um, I'm familiar with uh, Catholic Charities and what they do. I believe they're probably in most of our uh, local cities, but thank you again, Sister Darrell, for bringing us that special presentation. We appreciate it. Next on our program, we have a poem. Uh, the name of our poem is Christmas is the Greatest Gift of All, Sister Bria McNair. Good morning, everyone. Christmas morning. is the greatest gift of all. Christmas is when we celebrate the birth of Christ, who came to earth and gave his life. He was an innocent little baby boy, and he brought us so much joy. He is the perfect gift for all, and me, we must answer when he calls. For we do not need worldly stuff. He has given the very best to us. He stands with his arms open wide because he is the one who died. He is the perfect gift for all. Just accept him when he gives the call. For all have sinned and fallen short of his glory. But Christmas tells the greatest story. It's, it lets us know that he is the one. And all we have to do is accept his son. If we want to receive the greatest gift of all, we only have to answer his call. For the gift is free to all who will receive. The only thing we have to do is believe. This precious gift was bought with the blood of Christ. And this gift does not have a monetary price. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very well done. The question here, do you believe? Next on our program, in loving memory, and this will be presented by our First Lady Mabel Jones. There's going to be a Look out, Shannon. Descending from the sky, the dead in Christ will be on your shore. Going home, around the throne, oh As you see, the candle was not lit. We praise God from this time last year up until this up until this present time, we have no name to submit today. We thank God for that. We give him praise. We are all still here giving God the praise and the glory. We thank you, Lord. I just want to share a few little tidbits with you. And I'm not going in the original way the service should go. I'm going in the way the Lord is leading me to go. So first in your hearing, I would like to read this scripture coming from Lamentations, the third chapter, verses 21 and 24. This is a, a reassurance to us. This I recall to mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions faileth not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, will I hope in him. Lamentations, the third chapter, verses 21 through 24. God and our life, we have endured times of immense loss, but that is not where our story ends. 
you do not leave us in the valley. We will rise again and lean, leaning on you. Make our way up to the mountaintop, Lord. It's steep and we stumble sometimes, but we know, we know we cannot sit in the empty feeling of loss forever. There is so much that you want to give us, Lord, for us to fixate on what has been taken. You are our worth, the one who fills our empty cup. We thank you, Father, and we continue to keep our light lit. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we thank you for the allowing us to have these very special missionaries in our lives. We have been truly blessed by their presence, their works and words and actions and their love. We grieve not for them, but for us. We truly miss them. We shared so much and yet we feel our times together were fleeting. Help us, O oh Lord, to realize that the distance between us now is not so great and that one day we will be reunited with them in paradise. Together, we will glorify you, Almighty Father, your only Son, Jesus Christ, and your Holy Spirit for all eternity. In remembrance of our beloved missionaries, we continue to say your name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, First Lady Jones. Very well done. Always important to remember those who have gone on, whether we have anyone in the current uh, conference year or not. I agree with you on that. Moving on in our program, before we go into our special presentation um, for our luncheon, I just like to uh, take a moment just to share uh, the donation for the program is $25. And those donations can be sent to our treasurer, Sister Bria McNair. Her address is 11408 Appleton, Redford, Michigan, 48239. Um, the district treasurers will, uh, if you turn in those uh, donations to your district, excuse me, to your local treasurers, uh, they can get those uh, mailed in to our uh, district uh, treasurer, Sister Bria, as well as for the uh, districts, uh, Detroit and um, in the Gary district. Uh, Sister Bria, if you would um, put that information also in the chat for our guests uh, so that they will have it. We appreciate it. Now, we're going to bring you from theater live this afternoon, our special presentation. We wanna first of all, thank you for being here for our special presentation of Missionary Christmas and share the gift. Our gift to you this year will be shared in a few different ways. We will share through a presentation of short stories based on the deity of Jesus from the perspective of what God was thinking, his formulation and the present that he wrapped so gently and present that to you through stories, scripture and music. Our first story, the self-existent one, we can draw inspiration from Psalms uh, chapter 90, verse two. Before the mountains were born, wherever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You know, saints, God does not need us or the rest of creation, but yet he had joy when he created us. And all that he asks us to do 
is to glorify him and to bring him that joy. God's self-existence is referred to as his deity, which means having no other source. Again, God doesn't need anyone else. He is self-contained and he self-exists within himself. People may assume that God created human beings because he needed the companionship and was lonely. But if that was the case, my brothers and sisters, this would mean that God is not entirely independent of creation. And we know that he is because in John 17, five, Jesus prays, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. There was love and communication between the Father and the Son long before creation. God existed before the beginning of time and he is totally unique. Our stories will be told in the following order. Story one, the self-existent one. Story two, the word made flesh. Story three, the Christ child, the gift. Story four, his name is Jesus. Story five, salvation, the hope of glory. Now I present to you our special presentation, Share the Gift. Who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. I am the self-existent one. I have many names, such as Adonai, Elohim, Yahweh, El Shaddai, the Almighty One, Jehovah. That said, simply, my name is, I am that I am. The one that was before is and is to come. I once spoke to Moses in a burning bush, when I revealed myself to him at Mount Horeb. I, it was there I told him that my name is, I am that I am. I, I am the one that was in the beginning uh, and will be in the end. I am the one who caused darkness to yield its light. I am the one who created the heavens and the earth. For the scientist, I am the one who caused the Big Bang and gave rise to the primordial soup. I am the one who made the stars submit the lights unto me. I am the one who created the water and their deeps and the land and its mountains. I am the one before the mountains were born in the deeps or the deeps of the ocean yielded his majesty. I am the one who made the cedars spring forth with seedlings starting life anew as an embryo. I am the one who makes the sun to shine, the moon to glow, and the rainbow to yield as many colors. I am the one who is from everlasting to everlasting. And oh yes, I am the ancient of days. My creation, I am that I am. I am the self-existent one. In declaration of my self-existence on the sixth day of creating the earth, I said to Jesus and the Holy Spirit, let us make man in our image. So in my image did I create you, male and female. Now my creation, pardon me, but don't get it twisted. I am aware that many of you assume that I created humans because I needed companionship because I was lonely. The truth is I don't need anyone or anything that was or is or has been created. For it is written of me, in the beginning was the word and the word was with me and the word was me. The one who is me was with me and thought it not robbery to be equal with me. He is my only begotten son begotten, 
not made by any, but being of the same essence and quintessence as me. Between us existed a love and a communication long before creation. He who was called the word was all the company I ever needed. Yet the word who was not created, uh, created you humans, male and female. I am the one who sent the word to become incarnate from a womb of our creation. Yes, I am the one who caused my word to become but a mere dot on one of your ultrasound machines. Yes, I am the one who caused the supernova of a star to shine so bright that it lit the way to my word born in Bethlehem, laying in a manger with sheep and other animals as his witness. Yes, I am the one who, when my only begotten son Jesus was baptized in the Jordan, said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Yes, I am that I am. The ancient of days, I am the self-existent one. was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I was there in the beginning. The three of us made one of us, and we together created the world and all there is. The Father spoke, and all things were created. The Father spoke and lived in each word spoken. The Father spoke, but human ears struggled to understand. So the Father decided, instead of new ears, he would send a new word, a word that could be heard and understood a word that could be cradled in the arms of a brown teenage mother, a word that would be extended from the ghetto all the way to grace, a word that would speak truth to power and make folks wonder who does he think he is, a word that would be embraced by the outcast, a word that would find its way to the lost and break the chains of the bound. An itty bitty word would be shared with the world because the father knew that everybody loves a little bitty baby. And if the world was, and if the word was small and fragile and sweet, the people would be given to hold it and nurture it and keep it safe and watch it grow and make it one of their own. This word would be despised and rejected. This word would suffer and it would die. But this word would never be lost to the ages. This word would be the key to salvation, redemption, hope, 
and love. This word would serve as the passcode to every locked and isolated place. This word heals. When the time had come, the father spoke an ultimate word and wrapped human flesh around it. And he sent this word, his word into the earth so that everyone could have access to it. The father sent his word wrapped in flesh so that it could be spoken in every language, confessed by every tongue. This word looks just like God and we look just like God, even though we are different, even though we are strange. This word comes in every size and shape and custom. The father sent the word, not just a word, but the word that when uttered would bring demons to their knees and kingdoms to their ruin and victims to a place of victory. Oh yes, I was there in the beginning when there was nothing but us. When darkness had yet to know light, before up was separated from down. All of that happened when the father spoke. This proves that the words that the father speaks are life and promise and hope and complete. I am the embodiment of everything that came from the lips of the father. I am word with hands and feet. And I wanna come and live in your neighborhood. I, I wanna go to your church. I want to have access to your lives so that you may see the glory of my father for yourselves. I am word. All you have to do is learn to speak me. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon him, upon his shoulders, shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Oh, I dread facing another Christmas being hundreds of miles from my family. You know, we don't do much traveling during the winter months because of the Michigan cold weather. Sometimes loneliness and disappointment stirs into discontent, spewing out 
of my mouth as complaints. This morning, while we were having breakfast, that is what happened. When my husband suggested we unpack the holiday decorations. Now, how can I be joyful when my heart aches? This is my me moment. So I'm going to have a cup of hot tea. Well, I see the light is on in that curio cabinet of mine. My son Patrick stopped by on his way to work this morning to check on me. I guess his dad called him and told him that I had one of my moments, my weeping moments. You know, every time that boy comes over here, I just do declare, he turns the light on in that curio cabinet. My mind. I see that nativity set that is displayed in that cabinet and the light is shining on it. I guess that must be a sign to me to remember, to remind me of God and his coming to our world. that my life is part of God's life as well, that Jesus is a joyful king. He came in to bring fullness and the joy to mankind. Oh. Here's Jamie's dog. See her? She's a pretty girl, isn't she? Just like Jamie. Oh, and what is this? Oh, this is one of the scriptures that she learned when she was a little girl at our church during children's moment. You know, children's moment during our church at one time was a happy and a spontaneous moment for our children. But they came and shared their belief through song and scripture. You know, I miss those times. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Wow. As I whisper those words, those names, I can feel my spirit uplifting, letting me know that with confidence, that my tear-filled season can never be smothered. The joy of knowing who my savior is. You know, the prophet Isaiah announced, announced the coming of the Messiah more than 700 years before Christ's birth in Bethlehem. Isn't that something? 700 years. Then he was a prophet. He was one of God's servants. God's word encourages us that Jesus is wonderful counselor, trustworthy and able to guide us. He is mighty God, 
who always was and always will be the one true God with endless powers. He is everlasting father, the eternal maker of time. He is prince of peace. The one who restored mankind's relationship with the father. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad he did? Now that is good news. Though we as believers in Jesus Christ can't avoid the darkness of this world. But we can fix our eyes on him, the greatest light of the world. We can rejoice in knowing Christ, even through our tears. Dear Lord, thank you. Thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, that in our tear-filled moments, we can have your joy and peace. Thank you. Amen. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I am Paul. I have a word from God to you. My child, how I love to hear you speak my name. Do you understand the power involved in the name of Jesus? Because of my father, when you use my name, demons scatters, enemies fall. Thunder echoes, winds calm, rocks shout, and mountains move like pebbles in the sand. Speak my name, and hearts melt, knees bow, and tongues sing music sweeter than any song ever sung. Heaven opens its storehouse of blessing when my children ask and speak my name. There's no greater name under heaven or earth 
that stirs such emotion inside me. A whirlwind of praise, a flood of tears, a shower of gratitude. You are Jesus. And no word can express, no tongue can confess adequately the glory, majesty, and honor of your name. Jesus, 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 there is indeed something precious about that name. Jesus is the only name worth pursuing. Jesus, the only name worth honoring. Jesus, the only name worth remembering. There is something about that name. spiritually mature should think this way. And if anyone thinks differently, God will reveal it to him or her. Only let's live in a way that is consistent with whatever level we have reached. Brothers and sisters, become imitators of me and watch those who live this way. You can use us as models. As I've told you many times, and now say with deep sadness, many people live as enemies of the cross. Their lives end with destruction. Their God is their stomach and they take pride in their disgrace because their thoughts focus on earthly things. Our citizenship is in heaven. We look forward to a savior that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform our humble bodies so they are like his glorious body by the power that also makes him able to subject all things to himself. I can't believe Christmas is over, my dejected daughter said. I know how she feels. The aftermath of Christmas can feel dreary. Presents have been opened. The tree and lights must come down. Listless January. And for many, the need to shed holiday pounds awaits. 
Christmas and the breathless anticipation that comes with it suddenly feel eons away. A few years ago, as we were posting, as we were putting Christmas stuff away, I realized no matter what the calendar says, we're always one day closer to the next Christmas. It becomes something I now say frequently. But far more important than our temporal celebration of Christmas is the spiritual reality behind it. Salvation Jesus brought into our world and our hope for his return. Scripture talks repeatedly about watching, waiting, and longing for Christ's second return. I love what Paul says in Philippians 3, 15 and 21. He contrasts the world's way of living with minds set on earthly things with a lifestyle shaped by hope in Jesus' return. After all, our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a savior from there. That savior is the Lord Jesus Christ. The reality for our relationship is in heaven. Changes everything, including what we hope for and what we live for. That is, we are eagerly awaiting the return of our beloved Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. The reality that our citizenship is in heaven changes everything, including what we hope for and how we live. That hope is fortified by the knowledge that with every passing day, we are indeed one day closer to Jesus' return. Father, thank you for the hope that I have in Jesus. With the lesser hopes competing for my heart's affection, help me to lift my eyes to you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, you've heard five stories. We want to end this presentation with our gift that is to be shared with all of the world. This comes, our, the message of salvation comes from Galatians 4 and 5. But when the fullness of the time was come, God brought forth his son made of a woman under the law. Exactly, what does the word salvation mean? The word salvation con concerns an eternal spiritual deliverance. Salvation is God's amazing grace. It's the gift of freedom from our sins that Jesus made possible by taking the punishment for our sins on the cross. Jesus' death and resurrection proves to Christians that he 
is the Savior that God promised and the path to salvation through Christ's death on the cross. Christians are saved from eternal damnation and are given the hope of salvation. Share the gift of knowing Jesus. What are your plans for salvation? Hearing the gospel, believing in Jesus as God's son, repentance of sins. The choice is yours. And now the invitation. To God be the glory for the things he keeps on doing. As we just heard Sister Plummer said, what is your request or what do you think about receiving salvation? There may be someone today, as I extend the invitation to Christian discipleship, there may be someone that heard a word and want to give their life to Jesus. A song may have been sung. The door is open. Is there anyone today? Truly God is the only one worth pursuing. The only name worth honoring and the only name worth remembering. Is there anyone today? Is there someone today that's looking for a church home? You've been visiting, but now you want a church home. The door is open. There may be someone that wants to receive salvation. Is there anyone today? The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead on the third day, thou shalt be saved. Is there anyone? God bless you. God keep you. We in your hand. Thank you. Thank you so much for that invitation. So important. Now, as we prepare to roll the credits for this presentation that you just saw, we certainly want to thank everyone who has been a part of the uh, program. Uh, we also want to thank all of our guests, our family members that are on, special guests to the presidents for the Detroit district, the presidents of the Gary district, um, elders and uh, pastors. We just thank everyone for their participation for this special program. We hope you enjoyed it. As we roll these credits, we are going to prepare for remarks in the benediction and that will end our service. After the benediction, feel free to unmute and share with the brothers and sisters who are on. Thank you. It's been my pleasure to be your narrator, your MC for the Mid Michigan District Christmas program, Share the Gift. Sister Carrie Gordon will bring the remarks. After Sister Carrie Gordon will be our patron pastor, Reverend Llewellyn Jones, and following Pastor Jones will be our elder for the Mid Michigan and Detroit District. Um, Elder, uh, Reverend Dr. El uh, Reverend Dr. Tawana Harris, our elder. Thank you in that order. Amen. Praise God to everyone. This has been a wonderful experience in the Lord, the deity and the life of Jesus Christ, our Savior born on Christmas morning. Thanks to everyone. It has been a joy, my heart, feels glad about the situation of all that went into the program thanks to the um thanks to the presenters thanks to everyone we want to thank our regional president our host our tech team thanks to everyone we want to thank so much to sister Plummer, sister blair brown sister evans and sister little for putting in all that work for bringing this program together. We thank every singer. We thank every storyteller, every listener. We thank all those that participated in to make this program 
what it has been. It has been a wonderful program to God be the glory. And I just want to give praise to everyone, to God all high for giving us another opportunity this morning to gather together, to lift up his name and to tell the story of Jesus and the Father and all how he still lives today and still takes care of us. He is the Holy One, the United One, the he is almighty. He's everything that there is that names can be called. And sometimes I feel that we don't have enough names to give him all the praise, the glory, and the honor. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you to God for giving us this opportunity to share our Christmas program again. And thanks to everyone who participated. To God be the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'd like to also say thank you to all the pastors and the ministers that came on from the mid-Michigan district, as well as the Detroit district. I couldn't keep up with all the names, but I did notice that patron pastor Prince Williams was on. And to any other the other pastor, I thank God for you taking time out of your busy schedule, as well as I thank God for the mid-Michigan district um, President, Sister Carrie Gordon, is that's doing a great job in her leadership. And I thank God for the Mid-Michigan District um, missionaries for always being on time and always being on point and for always delivering a positive message that would take us further on this journey of life. To God be the glory for the great things he keeps on doing. God bless you. God keep you is my prayer. A beautiful picture has been painted today, and I'm going to leave it alone. And at this time, I'm going to move out the way for our presiding elder, um, the Reverend Dr. Tawana Harris, who took time out of her schedule, the presiding elder of the Michigan and Detroit District, to come and be a part of us. Yay! Thank God for presiding elder. Amen. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let me remix it this morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the Zoom sanctuary. Amen. Where God is. Anybody else glad to be here today? Come on, let me see you clap. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. If you enjoyed yourself today, keep clapping, keep clapping. If you enjoyed yourself, hallelujah. To God be the glory, great things God has done. Sister Deborah Plummer, you you are amazing. We praise God for you, for your vision, your insight, for putting such a great team together uh, to bring this day, this beautiful missionary experience before us all. Praise God for you, Sister Odestine Blair Brown. Thank you so much for working so closely with Sister Deborah Plummer, to mm -hmm. God be the glory. I just want to shout out all of these incredible program participants. Y'all yes. clap one more time for those babies who sang for us. Didn't they do an incredible job? Lord have mercy. It is good to see our young people being active and involved with their beautiful faces. Yes. Amen. Our church is yet living. As long as we continue mm -hmm. to nurture our babies, there will be a church in the future. So to God be the glory for all of you who work with those babies uh, mm. over at Bray to make sure that they could be here with us on today. And for that beautiful young lady who gave us that poem, oh, incredible. Sweet. Thank you mm -hmm. for sharing your spoken word gifts with us. Listen, mm. don't stop clapping because weren't those storytellers amazing? Huh? <laughs> I almost fell out of my chair when Sister Shelly pulled out that tea. Lord have mercy. Talk about props. Did y'all see Jesus with his silky wig? Y'all miss Jesus. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did y'all see, uh, did y'all see the apostle? Huh? Yeah. Lord have mercy for the time and the vision and, and the, and the love that they shared in conveying all of these incredible stories. We just add, we just want 
Our prayer is that you got something out of today that you were more than entertained, but that you were inspired. Listen, let me acknowledge a couple of more uh, people. I just want to shout out the missionaries. Mm -hmm. Listen, missionaries, can't nobody do what you do like you do. And we thank you for doing yeah. it big in mid Michigan. Thank you for setting yeah. the bar so high to all of the missionary presidents who are on to God be the glory for you, for your leadership and vision. Thank you so much uh, uh, for just moving us forward and for the beautiful gift that you're going to share with Catholic Charities. We praise God. Let me know how I can give because I want to support as well to God be the glory. Mm -hmm. I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the annual conference lay leader who's on with us, uh, attorney Barbara Bulknight. Y'all clap mm -hmm. it up for our lay leader. Y'all saw brother R. Evans uh, on here as a storyteller. Yeah. Um, I am just, y'all, over the moon. This has been such a wonderful Saturday morning experience. The only thing that would have made it better if, if, is if there was some way virtually y'all could have given me some eggs and stuff. But you know what? That's all right. Because one of these all days, we're going to be back. We're going to have our luncheon. We're going to be in each other's presence once again. Mm -hmm. Let me say to whoever did this editing, let me say, you are incredible. I caught every trick you used. It yeah. was great. It was wonderful. Brother, thank brother you Tyrone. for show, brother Tyrone. Thank Tyrone Nelson. Thank you for putting this together and even uh, editing in the soloist over the choir. You are amazing. Thank you for showing us how it is done. Listen, listen, I'm so glad that we are able to do church in so many different ways. I'm so glad that we're able to fellowship in so many different ways. I'm so glad that God is proving to us that he shows up for us inside the church, but even on Zoom. Are you glad? Yeah. If you're glad about it, shout amen where you are. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We give God praise for you. And I believe that is the balance of my responsibility other than the benediction. Benediction. So allow me to pronounce the benediction this way. I always love to pronounce the benediction in the style of our bishop, who is the 58th bishop in line of secession in the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. Y'all, if Bishop Williams were here with us this morning, he would start off by saying, I want you to look me in my face. And hear me when I say to you that it is my prayer to God that the Lord bless you and keep you, that the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, that the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon all of you and give you peace. That's the way Bishop would do it, but he ain't here. So here's what I'm going to say. I pray that you would remember the stories that were told today. I pray that you would remember the God of every story. And I pray that that same God, the self-sufficient one, the word made flesh, I pray that he would live in you and blow your mind in every way. Now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think, be glory, honor, majesty, dominion, and power now, henceforth and forevermore. And all God's people unmuted themselves and said, amen. 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 Amen.